over 65,000 voices in Allegiant Stadium every Sunday. Each voice piercing, deafening, shattering decibel meters as the sound of Raider Nation's passion echoes throughout the stadium. But one voice stands out from the crowd. This is the story of that voice. sports mean to you? Sports was everything to me as a kid. Sports is the only thing I've ever wanted to be involved in in terms of a career. Other than I'd like to own a coffee shop where I see everyone as a regular and I know their names and their order before they walk in. <laughs> um, but it's, 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 it's the thing that I have always wanted to do and it's one of those things that I'm really lucky that I get to do. I've always wanted to be an announcer. My brother, who's four years older than me, tells stories all the time of how he would leave us playing video games in the family room because I wouldn't stop talking. And I would just broadcast our video games and annoy the crap out of him and he would leave. So <laughs> as far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a play-by-play -play announcer. Hey folks, how are you? Along with three-time Pro Bowler tackle Lincoln Kennedy, bud. Off the playoff year from a season ago where they beat the Chargers in overtime to do it. <laughs> you know, I can't believe after a week of football that we've seen that we were still in this game. <laughs> Growing up, the person who got me into sports was my uncle who married into the family. He's the one who started taking me into games. He's the one who I'd sit with at Michigan football games. And I became known as the boy who asked questions. <laughs> because my uncle who took me, my uncle Paul, is also a big guy. And so when I look at Lincoln, I see my uncle. As, as silly as that sounds, I, I couldn't have asked for a better partner in year one. As that little kid from Detroit found his voice, one thing hasn't changed, the love Jason Horowitz has for the game. There is no way Jason could do anything else but this. When you hear him, he is creating you know, a story for people when they're driving in their car and they can't be just watching the game or or they're choosing to just listen to the game and he's you can just hear how much he loves doing what he's doing i don't think there is anything else that he could be doing let's set the scene it looks on the field like it did 50 years ago at three rivers stadium the end zones are painted yellow on one side it's spelled out block letters pittsburgh on the other side steelers with the nfl logo and the afc logo Dances in the pocket, fires far pylon. It's caught by Abdullah on the run. In the end zone, touchdown Raiders. There are many ways dreams become reality. And sometimes it means answering the phone. What began with thousands came down to 12. 12 dreamers with the shot at the big time. Now the next six rise up into the spotlight to show us what they've got. They had auditions in cities all across the country. Uh, I drove down from Syracuse to Washington, D.C. Um, with a friend of mine. And so I had a VHS of when the Pistons won, at the time, their second straight NBA title. Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Vinnie Johnson, the whole thing. And George Blaha, he had this great call when Vinnie Johnson hit a game-winning shot in Game 5 to beat the Portland Trailblazers. And they're like, all right, do any call you want. And so I'm, I'm like racking my brain, like, what am I going to do? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that one. And so like, all I did was exactly what George Blaha did when Vinnie Johnson hit the game-winning shot. Isaiah's going to go one-on-one -on, -one on quarter. Right side pass to Vinnie Johnson with three. DJ against Kersey, backs him down. Vinnie puts up a 14-footer. It was my dream job audition story. <laughs> Although I didn't win, it definitely jump-started my career to get to CBS and be part of CBSSports.com when they wanted to start video for the internet. 
It's one thing to be on the hot seat. It's a total different thing to injure yourself getting off of it. Hey, how are you? Jason Horvitz. Glad you could join us in the paint exclusively here on CBS Sportsline on this Tuesday, February 13th edition. As far as weird injuries, how about Oregon coach Ernie Kent tearing his rotator cuff trying to call a timeout? That general energy, and you hear that music, and like, hey, the voice meets that, and and the energy level fits into that, and like, there's that like smile that you see while you're listening to it. Like, I, I don't think that's ever changed. You know, I, my pacing might be a little bit different. My voice might be a little bit different. My bags under my eyes might be a little bit different. But like, I, I still think that's the same. That's still me. That's the, that's the kid that always wanted to do this. When I got that phone call in July of 2022, be like, hey, this is the Las Vegas Raiders. Are you interested? That's a pretty special phone call. And I never actually thought I'd get the job. And then when a week later, when I got a text message from our boss here, Brad Finney, be like, hey, you're our guy. I was sitting at dinner with my wife, Karen, and just kind of screamed a little bit. What drew you to the Raiders? First and foremost, it is an NFL franchise. It was an opportunity to call NFL football. It was an opportunity to be the voice of a team, which I grew up wanting to be the voice of a team, um, wanting to be someone that, whether it's kids, adults, but hey, they know that voice and they recognize that with different plays throughout the course of decades. But then beyond that, you know, in the history of football, particularly the history of the NFL, you know, there's 32 franchises, so there's only 32 of these jobs, but there are certain franchises that stand out in the history of the NFL more than the others. And there's no question that the Raiders are in that upper echelon of the history of importance of this league. Bucket well, getting to Allen, sending a wide left. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away for a moment. Come back up the middle of 30, 35, 40. Hoax past two men at the 50, down to the 40. Picking up a blocker. Oh, Toledo! Touchdown, Raiders! Play fake. Back is Plunkett. Time to throw. Deep to the end zone to Branch. It is caught by Branch. Touchdown, Raiders! When I was asked my opinion, who I thought would be able to be with the Raiders for a long time and who was good, I thought of Jason. I just thought that this is a good guy to be coming into a new market uh, who can grow with it with the fans. He just has amazing likability. He has tremendous credibility because of his preparation. And his voice is terrific. So when I was asked my opinion, uh, it wasn't hard for me. Snap on first and goal. Pitch to Jacobs, racing left. Breaks a tackle. Leans the ball forward. Touchdown, Raiders! Calling NFL games is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It's, it's a job that anyone would give both of their legs to do. It's an unbelievable thing that everybody knows what you're doing. Everyone knows how unique an opportunity this is and how big of an opportunity it was. Jason Horowitz, voice of the Raiders. So with Perriman out here, yeah. I always think this is one of the few games of the year where you have to have a spy on the quarterback. Yeah. The that's... biggest aspect of my job is bringing the game itself to people who aren't there. When you're doing a game on radio, you are the voice in the, in the eyes uh, to paint the picture and the imagination of what is happening in front of you as best you can. And it could be good, it could be bad, it could be who knows, and it could be something that you have to be prepared for the unexpected. I want to make sure that Whatever happens in the three hours of football that's about to happen in front of us, it's described with accuracy, with the correct amount of energy. Play action again, walking downfield, lofts it near corner, Adams wide open at the five, he walks in, and the Raiders walk off with a win. Jacob, 74 yards on 13 carries, and he gets it again. Pitches it back to Derek Carr. Looking downfield for Devontae Adams. It's straight at the five. Touchdown, Raiders. And that's it's even more glorious. Again. That's even more glorious. You know, the Raiders, they were great in allowing everything that I needed and had going on in my life to still be that. They know that I am someone who wants to be around my family as much as possible. They know that at the moment our base is back uh, in New Jersey and families back on the East Coast. And so there really wasn't much of a discussion other than excitement. Innately, sacrifices are required to live out your dreams. But for the Horowitz family, the focus is doing what you love.
schedule of a sportscaster can be intense and it's, there's a lot of travel involved and time away from home. He is putting everything he has into broadcasting for the Raiders and telling that story. And then sometimes he's taking a red eye home that night so that he can walk the kids to school the next morning. So he has figured out the balance of how to show up and be there for our family um, and then also be completely committed to being here too. I'm on the road, whether it's here, before getting the Raiders job, other places around the country. They are doing their life. They are still <laughs> doing um, their day-to-days with schools, activities. So it's as much about me when I go back, fitting into their lives, it's not about them fitting into mine. I'm the voice of an NFL team and they enjoy it. And the reality is that's always a work in progress. I'm sure a lot of play-by-play -play announcers and their families deal with, um, or anybody that travels for their job. And it's hard, but I would say that we do it well as a team and, and do our best to make it work. I grew up knowing that I didn't want to do something that I didn't like. And so the support that, that I had for my family about doing a job that I wanted to do, and then in life doing a job that I love doing, that aspect of it is something that we constantly talk about, which is, I know it stinks that dad leaves. I know it stinks that I leave. But when you get older, I want you to do something that you love, the same way that I'm doing something that I love. I think Ted Lasso said it best in the last episode about what people like about live sports and that nobody knows what's gonna happen. And whether that's an upset, whether that's a player that nobody knows about who makes the biggest play, or whether that's just a play that you've never seen before and you get the shock and awe and, 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 and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. There are, there are countless of those throughout the history of sports and they're the ones that people always go back to. It's, it's why everyone's like, I know where I was when. Down to five on the play clock, gets the snap, hands off to Jacobs, stutters to the right, bursts through the hole, 20, 25, 30, he's off to the races here in Seattle, nobody's gonna catch him. 25, 20, 10, ball game. Bye bye Josh, 86 yards in overtime. To it warms my heart because you can hear how happy he is doing this, but just, it's just so apparent that he is, he's just meant to do this. Every broadcast that opens, I open with, hey folks, how are you? It's kind of just like a welcome to us, you're one of us, and I will see you soon, and I really hope you're doing well. I've had one year to be the voice of the Raiders, and we've had 17 regular season games. Uh, two overtime walk-off wins. <laughs> um, but I, I hope that I fit in with this franchise for a long time to come. Hey folks, how are you? 